Okay. All right. I guess we can go ahead and start. All right. So thanks everyone for staying here this late for the lightning talks. So um, I'll talk about a new project that we're starting called Pivot, and this is a project to collect data from vehicles, so in-vehicle data mostly. And you might be asking yourselves, you know, what are, why do we need in-vehicle data? What are the uses? What are the applications? You know, what we can do with it? And uh, let me try to motivate this with a little video. And this is one example as to why you might want to collect in-vehicle data. We can only get it to start. That I did not expect. Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping to show this. I have no idea why it's not working. Okay, I guess we're going to have to skip it. Sorry about that. So, what the video was. And I thought it was going to be interesting to you guys. It was a, a video showing uh, a test crash. So it was a video that was showing uh, a car being pulled into a truck and then another truck behind it coming in and essentially smashing the car in between two trucks. And the reason that video was done, that experiment was done, was to collect data from black boxes inside cars to collect information about um, uh, crashes, right? So it was, it was there to collect, to see what information is in black boxes so you can recreate a, uh, a crash and study a crash and, uh, you know, uh, draw conclusions. So there's just one example as to why we may want to collect in-vehicle data. There's uh, many more other applications that will have us collect um, that type of data. So the Data is there and needed by researchers who you know are trying to advance the state of the art. But currently, this type of data, in vehicle data, are very ad hoc. So people collect them to run their experiments. They save them somewhere. They don't necessarily get published to um, to the rest of the world. The researchers do their experiments, and then the data is left there to languish, and other people. Um, but don't get to use it. So this project, uh, in, among others, is there to collect the data that other people have uh, uh, produced um, and make it available uh, to researchers, in addition to other data that we collect. So let's see what else. Potential applications. There are applications in many different types, in many different areas that this data can be used. For vehicle applications, you can use this data to do system monitoring in a car and optimization. You can collect data from in vehicle infotainment. You can do predictive maintenance, and a lot of companies out there already do that. They collect data from your car, and then they might send you an email saying your battery is about to die, or your engine is having a problem. According to our data, you might want to make an appointment with a repair shop. Um, other applications include route and trip planning uh, and also information from ADAS, uh, from connected vehicles, electric vehicles, uh, and so forth. At a higher level, this data can be used by transportation and fleet management to work on passenger safety, traffic management, uh, do ride-sharing applications, um, and uh, multimodal mobility, you know, where you combine cars and scooters and, and so forth. And even by insurance. Insurance is actually one of the major um, um, uh, entities that require this data, and they want it so they can create a new insurance model. 
things like pay as you drive, pay while you drive, uh, and so forth. Um, <coughs> that data may be used by smart cities to do infrastructure monitoring, to do weather sensing, to do asset management, and so forth. But also it can be used for safety and cybersecurity. One example that a lot of companies out there are, are, are doing is intrusion detection systems in cars by monitoring the um, voltages uh, inside a canvas. And this allows them to detect whether a new device has been inserted in a can that perhaps was not authorized uh, to be there. So what is this project? So this project is an effort between the University of Memphis, where I am, uh, Colorado State University, where Jeremy Daly is uh, one of uh, my co-PIs, and also the USC or the University of Southern California Information Sciences, Sciences Institute, where David Balanson is uh, with Wes Hattiger. The other collaborator in this project is a company, Geotab. And what Geotab does is a telematics company. Uh, they're based in Canada, but they're pretty much international. And they have agreed to work with us on this project, and they provide some of the data that they collect and make it available to fleet managers. So it's aggregated data, so it can be, so it's, so, so it's anonymized, uh, but it's data from a lot of cars that through this project can be made available to researchers. It's a three-year project, started in October, ends in September 2025. It's about $1.8 million, and the purpose of the project is to support the NSF community or the National Science Foundation community in the U.S., but this is just, um, uh, this is not a, exactly true. The NSF will be more than happy if we support the international community with this project. How do you build a project like that? Well, we believe that you need five pillars to build this project. You need your platform your web server that supports all the user accounts uh, when, when users come in and looking for data and so forth, or searching for data and so forth. We need another pillar, which is the collection and curation of the data that we are going to make available to uh, researchers. We need services uh, for researchers uh, for sharing, securing, and evaluating data sets. We need tools that researchers can use to manipulate the data. And we need community outreach. Uh, so this is, community outreach is a very important part of this project, and what we're trying to do here is advertise the fact that this infrastructure is there and engage with the community to see what they want, what kind of tools, what kind of services, what kind of data they would like to have. So this is a project that is very uh, feedback-oriented. So we work with the community and we try to respond to needs from the community. <coughs> so going into the five pillars in a little more detail, the pivot platform is nothing uh, that you do not expect. So we will have our web server, we will have um, the, um, we'll include security obviously because some of the data we collect is uh, sensitive. It will be hosted on our machines in Memphis and it will get mirrored in, in Colorado. So this is your standard web service platform with the software needed to do the social interaction, user accounts, and so forth. The services we plan to deploy uh, are access to data sets and tools for all researchers. For data sets that are external, in other words, data, data sets that we do not collect, we will provide links. Uh, we will provide access to the Geotab data sets, uh, the, the data that they provide. Uh, we will also um, provide data from another project called Spindle. I'll talk about it in just a second. And we will also provide uh, data sets that will be crowdsourced um, through devices that we will distribute. I'll talk about that in just a second, too. We will also <coughs> sorry, provide privacy support. So for data that we collect through crowdsourcing, there will be knobs, privacy knobs, that the contributors will be able to turn to uh, decide what level of privacy they're willing to um, include in the data. We will also provide something called institutional re review board support. Now, the IRBs are something that uh, all U.S. universities have, and I suspect other universities in the rest of the world, and the 
what these review boards do is whenever you do research that may involve human subjects, you talk to them, describe what the research is, and then you get approval from them that yes, it's okay to do the research, or no, you have to do this to protect your human subjects. It's a very tricky um, area. It's, a, uh, it's sometimes hard and not very easy for researchers to navigate. So we will engage with our IRB and share experiences with other universities who may want to do the same thing. And then we'll provide community coordination and interaction. Now, what data sets are we going to provide? So those are divided into three broad categories. The first one is pretty obvious. It's data sets that are out there, but the researchers at large may not know about. So we will go out, find them, review them, and bring them in if we need to, and uh, make the community aware that these data sets have been produced, they have been used to write papers, they have been used to do research, and here's a description of what they are, and then you decide whether you want to use it. So that's the easy part. The next category is data from Geotab, the company, and this is data that the, the Geotab will provide to us. As I mentioned earlier, this is aggregated data from their devices. We will also provide data from, uh, from Geotab, but this is from a program that we run. So in other words, we have a set of a small number of volunteers who, will in, who have installed devices, uh, telematics devices in their cars, and that data we don't have restrictions in terms of what we make available. Because it's coming from volunteers, that data is fully available to us and we are free to distribute it according to what the small group of volunteers uh, decides. <coughs> and finally, the other type of data is through can loggers, devices that we are we were implementing and we will distribute to uh, the community. And this is data from cars and trucks. So, a little more detail on community data sets. Um, again, this is data that's out there. A few examples are listed here. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard of these uh, data sets and if you're looking for data sets and you haven't seen these, then that's why we are here to find them uh, for you. The Geotab telematics data, it's coming from uh, a service that Geotab provides called Altitude. If this is data from all the cars that they serve, about two and a half million cars around the world, and uh, it's aggregated data. And we are going to get two main data sets from them. One is called intersections. So this is data about intersections. You know, how long does it take to go through an intersection? What's the average speed? Uh, and so forth. And the other data set is called roads. And this is uh, characteristics about uh, you know, roads in, in general, about mobility and about, uh, you know, data that, that allows you to do individual road uh, analysis. So the advantage of the data from Geotab is that while it's anonymized and aggregated, it's coming from a lot of cars, millions of cars. On the other end of the spectrum, again, with Geotab's help, we run a small program that we call Spindle. And essentially what this program is, is a few of us installing Geotab devices in our cars and getting, and, and that day using Geotab's cloud infrastructure to collect that data, but then we go to the cloud and collect that data for us. Okay, all right, I'll be done in, in just a second. All right, here's an, an example of uh, the data we collect from Spindle. Here's a map of me going to the airport and then um, engine information. This is a picture of the can loggers that we are planning to implement and install in the cars. And this is an example of data that we will be collecting through can loggers. And this is a knowledge pyramid. And it, we, we go from very low level data and then building on top of it up to um, um, you know, high level data. Okay. This is the type of outreach uh, that we will do. It's what you expect, uh, webinars uh, and uh, uh, educational um, events and so forth. Um, let me not go through the benefits of Pivot. Hopefully you'll see these, but very quickly, these are the benefits that we expect 
benefits for the AGL community and then benefits from uh, for the NSF research researchers on our side. So we, ex we, we think there's benefits on both sides. All right, and these are the um, usual suspects. And um, um, the, there's uh, a website uh, that you can go to and start getting information. And very soon you'll be seeing um, data on that website. Uh, but feel free to use these links uh, to send us email and uh, engage in uh, whatever capacity uh, you want. So I was under the impression that I, I would have 20 minutes. And I think you're stopping me at 10. <laughs> anyway, so sorry for the rush at the end. Um, any, any questions, any, anything that I can answer? So again, to, to recap, this is a project to collect in-vehicle data and make it available to the community along with all the services and the community outreach to go with them with the purpose of fostering research, uh, developing applications, and essentially giving you the data so you can um, come up with you know, whatever research or ideas or applications that you, uh, you may have. And we will happily take any data that you have created if you, um, if you, if you created data, but you don't want to go through the trouble of advertising, distributing it, uh, then we'll happily take the data from you and do the advertisement um, for you if you want to give that data to the community. Okay. All right. If there's any no more questions, thank you.